case you two gentlemen are interested. The invitation to help is non-exclusive. We'll accept it from anybody. Well, I'm sorry, lady, but some other time. We've got some pressing business waiting for us back in St. Louis. Yes, we're taking off as soon as Mr. Nighthawk can figure out how to do it on one propeller. Nighthawk? Not Johnny Nighthawk, owner and operator of Nighthawk Airlines? One and the same, lady. It's my partner, Matt Brent. Well, I've heard about you, Mr. Nighthawk. When it comes to flying, they say you'll do anything for a dollar. Well, now, for a dollar, I can get you about 20 nickels. For a lot of dollars, I'll consider almost anything, with or without an airplane. Well, I've got something for you. It's a present, and it won't cost anybody a cent. Yeah? The Golden Age of Television presents Scott Brady starring in Forced Landing with Richard Erdman after these messages. Television presents Forced Landing. DC-3-141 Charlie. DC-3-141 Charlie. We've got a broken propeller. Request immediate instructions to land. Over. DC-3-141 Charlie. This is Kendis Tower. You are cleared to land. Runway 15. Wind south 10. I never saw it to fail. Every time we get a chance to get our skulls above water, something like this has to happen and shove us back under. Somebody up here hates us. Emergency. Explosion on field three. Hope he's through to the boss. Quick! Look, you gotta lend us the dough. Without it, we can't get the ship back up into the air. Hello, Joe. Can you hear me? All right, I know we're into you for 350 already. So what? We're good for it. Look, Joe, I told you, we've got a big charter waiting for us in St. Louis. But this busted prop is forced us down in Kansas City. Once you wire us the dough with... Hung up. Why should he be any different? Who's left? Anybody? Well, the dead Copeland. We owe him, too. Is there anybody we don't? If there is, it's an oversight. Hey, Johnny. Sounds like real trouble. Yeah, let's concentrate on our own. I mean, call Copeland. Anything to get us out of this Turkish bath. Where are you going? To concentrate on what we do after Copeland turns you down. Well, the grill down the street says air conditioning. Yeah, we'll concentrate real hard, will you? If we don't figure out a way to raise a thousand bucks for that prop, we'll have to be stuck here for good. With our luck, it could happen. some time before it gets here. If this fire could get completely out of hand by then, what we need is manpower now. Pull them in out of the refinery. We yanked them out 10 minutes ago. What about the night shift? Has anybody tried to round them up? I'll go now. I know a few spots in town where they hang out. My car's right over here. I'll drive you. <coughs> say no than the others. May I ask what this little ruckus is all about? Nothing. Politics, women, who can remember? Well, I can remember. It was Dice. He rang in a load of dice. Me. All right, let's have it, Matt. Johnny, we need it. The propeller? Give. Yeah, buddy. Next time, don't play dice with strangers. Thanks. I'll remember that. I tried. You're pressing too hard, Matt. Cops in this town look pretty conscientious to me. 
Two coffees, please. I suppose you'd prefer my whittling a propeller out of a block of wood. Not a bad idea. We could use your head. Funny. In case you big spenders don't know it, there's a blaze going on. You gonna let your jobs burn up, or you gonna do something about it? Look, Mac, I'm a rigger. I ain't no fireman. Are you any kind of man? Maybe you think I'm worried because of what I stand to lose from this fire. Well, you're right. I'm plenty worried. But remember this. If Kendis goes down the drain, you go with it. You men have homes here, families. You might start thinking about them. Come on, let's go. Next block. The trucks are waiting. In case you two gentlemen are interested, the invitation to help is non-exclusive. We'll accept it from anybody. Well, I'm sorry, lady, but some other time. We've got some pressing business waiting for us back in St. Louis. Yes, we're taking off as soon as Mr. Nighthawk can figure out how to do it on one propeller. Nighthawk? Not Johnny Nighthawk, owner and operator of Nighthawk Airlines? One and the same, lady. It's my partner, Matt Brent. Well, I've heard about you, Mr. Nighthawk. When it comes to flying, they say you'll do anything for a dollar. Well, now, for a dollar, I can get you about 20 nickels. For a lot of dollars, I'll consider almost anything, with or without an airplane. Well, I've got something for you. It's a present, and it won't cost anybody a cent. Yeah? I never saw her before in my life. That's lucky. If she knew you any better, she'd have shot you. That looks like a bad one, Johnny. Yeah. You know something, Matt? That fire could kill this town. What do you say we give him a hand? Sorry. You and I never meet, do we? We just seem to collide head on. You think you can manage to work your way around me from now on? If you mean let's avoid each other, it'll be my pleasure. Yeah, life is just too short, lady. I'm curious, Nighthawk. Who's paying you? What in the blue-eyed world are you babbling about now? You're not doing this out of the goodness of your heart. Where's the money in it? Somebody promised me the charcoal concession. Now, why don't you go toast a marshmallow, lady, and quit chasing me around? Because we're a long way from even. That slug didn't begin to pay you back. All right, I'll ask. For what? Oh, what a convenient conscience you have. You mean you've forgotten all about Venezuela and Bendix Oil, the company you helped put out of business. Bendix Oil? That's right. You contracted to bring in all their supplies, remember? Yeah, I remember. You should. It isn't every day you can take somebody's money, neglect to deliver, and get away with it. Well, Bendix was a subsidiary of Kendis. I owned it. Well, what do you know? So you're the one responsible for that crummy little swindle. I? Responsible? For you swindling me? Why, you little... Don't, because this time you won't get away with it. I believe you. That's just about your speed. We've got troubles, Miss Candace. The worst yet. Couldn't get much worse. I'm afraid it could, Miss Candace. Holiday. That's the research building. It's curtained in by the fire. Chances are it'll go up in the next two or three hours. I thought you were serious. We've already lost eight buildings. What's one more? It's not the building. I'm thinking of the thousands of drums of carbon tetrachloride we have stashed in the basement. Now, if those drums become hot enough, they'll burst. When the contents are released, they become phosgene and chlorine gases, which, if picked up by the wind, could completely blanket the whole city. Wipe out everything that breathes. Are you positive about this? Yes, I'm afraid so. Have you notified the authorities? Not yet. Besides, you couldn't get a crew anywhere near that building. Oh, we can't just stand here and do nothing. We can stall. Maybe in an hour the winds will shift. Maybe they'll die out altogether. I can't take that responsibility. You want to risk a panic? Now look, Miss Kendis. If the word leaks out, every man that's got a family out there is going to try to get them out. They'll fight for the trucks, bicycles, anything that moves. There won't be a volunteer left on the fire line. Our tough luck. Oh, no, wait a minute. There's another possibility. Now, the research building formerly was a refinery. 
That's right. We converted it, so... Uh, here, take a look. Now, according to this map, the pipeline used to run directly from field number three to the refinery. Now, if the line hasn't been lifted, it must still connect with the building. It does connect with the basement. We sealed the outlet off, but it could be busted through. You couldn't get the drums out through a pipeline. No, but we might get a man into the building through it. And if we could, that man could reach the water pipes and flood the basement. Immersed in enough water, those drums won't become hot enough to burst. That's the answer. Mm. Statistically, the man would be overcome by the hazards. Such as? Well, the pipe is narrow. He'd have to grease himself and unable to get through the tight spots. Then, they... also, if the flames happened to reach him, he'd become a human torch. And the pipe may be blocked. Or worse yet, it could become blocked while he's in there. Then, if an explosion should occur nearby, well, the concussion trapped in such a tight area would shatter every blood vessel in his body. And he may reach the basement too late. Some drums may burst while he's in there. Uh, I don't know where you'll find a volunteer willing to face those possibilities. Mac! You see those two men over there? Bring them in. What for? One of them is our volunteer. The golden age of television will continue in a moment. This was Matchlight Instant Lighting Chart Television. Now you'll have to navigate almost 150 feet of pipeline. And right here where it enters the building, it's been bricked off. But you can break through easily enough. He must be kidding. We haven't got time for jokes or conversation. Besides, you don't appeal to men like Mr. Nighthawk, you buy them. There's $20,000 in that envelope. It goes to the man who starts down that pipe. Win, lose, or draw. $20,000? Oh, get it. Come on, Matt. You had me worried in there. For a minute, I was afraid you were going to take him up on the... I thought you said you'd do anything for money. I said almost anything. That doesn't include liking your attitude. Carrying two cents with a Kenneth's Petroleum burns down or not. Forget Kenneth's Petroleum. I'm talking about Kendra City. The people who live here, the women, the children, those men over there. If you can tell me how to get them out without causing a panic, or how to keep their homes from burning to the ground without anybody here to fight the fire, I'll shout the alarm right this minute and let this whole plant burn to the ground. You better have another look at that map. Johnny, no. Then you're taking the job. That's the first right conclusion you've jumped to all day, lady. Johnny, forget it. And just in case that pipeline of yours fouls me up, let's get the record straight about Venezuela. I didn't neglect delivering those supplies to Bendix. That slimy manager of yours never came up with a dime for anything or anybody. He just kept pocketing it. You might check with the natives down there. They're still looking for him. Look, Matt, look at it this way. That 20000 bucks not only gets us off the ground, but it gives us a down payment on a second plane. We'll be able to meet the competition. You've got to be alive to compete. I'll remember that. Hand me that flashlight. Johnny, I'll make you a proposition. Look, I'm smaller than you are. I can get through that pipe a lot easier. What do you say? Well, that makes sense. You know what I'll do with you. I'll roll you for it, okay? Well, here you go.
What do they mean you can't take it with you? Drums aren't underwater by this time. Tell him to start evacuating. <laughs> See how you feel. If that me better, I'd be sick. How's the fire? They're mopping up. We've beaten it. I'm afraid apologies aren't easy for me. That isn't necessary. This is. I'm sorry for... There'll be a lot of widows and orphans after this fire. Anybody take up a collection for them? We'll take care of them. Let me have that. Here. Toss this in the kitty, all of it. What? I don't know how I can ever... You can tell me about it later. I will, Johnny. Oh, that loot, you must be out of your mind. Well, I always was a sucker for brunettes. Cheer up, we still got that big charter waiting for us back in St. Louis. We can get there without a propeller. Oh, propeller, forgot about that. Minor detail. He forgot. Well, go out to the airport and have him install it anyway. Tell him to fill up the tanks, too. Well, just like that. Would you like me to pay for it with our non-existent cash, or would you like me to charge it? Well, charge it, of course. To, uh, Kendis Petroleum. Uh, say that Miss Kendis wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Join us at the same time next week when the Golden Age of Television presents Chain and the River.